Now we'll talk about gravity. This is something that all of us are obviously familiar with from everyday experience. But Isaac Newton, Isaac Newton was the first person to give us a modern understanding of gravity and he got it right and this was one of the many things in his famous book the Principia or the mathematical principles of natural philosophy as the full title was now you've probably heard a story or heard reference to a story of Newton and an apple or a mention of Newton's apple something like that it's uh, it's said that Newton's thinking about gravity was prompted by his seeing an apple fall. Newton was thinking about the forces on the apple, the downward pull of gravity on the apple and what made it accelerate down and how gravity worked. And in fact, if you go to Cambridge today, and here's a picture of Cambridge, this is uh, what's called Trinity College at Cambridge, Cambridge University, very, very old university, even hundreds of years old at the time of Isaac Newton and it's divided up into several colleges and this is Trinity College where Newton attended school a very prestigious university even at the time um, near one of the gates they have an apple tree and this is supposedly a descendant of the apple tree from the from which the apple fell which prompted Newton to think about gravity we don't know that for sure but that's what they claim the apple tree that um, if, if there was an apple tree that uh, produced an apple that Newton saw fall, it would have been in Lincolnshire where he was at the time when Cambridge was closed because of the Black Plague. But then he came back to finish his studies at Cambridge after the plague was over. And they have a tree here and this is supposedly a descendant of, the, of Newton's tree. Uh, um, the tree from Newton's day would obviously be dead by now but um, it would have produced apples and those apples had seeds that produced other trees and so on. So trees would have descendants and this is supposedly one of them. Now Newton knew that the apple was attracted to the earth. The earth pulled down on the apple. Everybody knew that. Newton's big intellectual breakthrough was that it wasn't just the earth pulling down on the apple. The earth and the apple pull on each other. So you could draw a diagram like this. You could draw the earth here and you could draw the apple up here. This is not to scale, obviously. And there would be a downward pull on the apple from the force of gravity pulling down. And at the same time, there's an upward pull on the Earth. They pull together. Now, the downward pull on the apple is enough to make the apple accelerate down. The upward pull on the Earth is the same size as the downward pull on the apple. Those are equal and opposite forces. So if there's a... 10 newtons of force pulling down on the apple then there's 10 newtons of force pulling up on the earth the thing is that 10 newtons of force is not enough force to move the earth noticeably the earth is huge it has a tremendous amount of inertia and 10 newtons is not going to make a even even remotely perceptible motion of the earth it obviously moves the apple, it accelerates the apple downward, but it has no significant effect on the, the size of, on the motion of the earth, just because the size of the earth is so big. But Newton realized, even, even though it's not perceptible, Newton realized that that is the case, that those two attracted each other. And in fact, any two objects attract each other. And we'll put that in the notes. According to Newton, any two objects attract each other. And by attract we mean a force, an attractive force, a pull. Any two objects pull together. And that means any two objects at all. If you have a tabletop sitting here and you have a cup sitting on the tabletop and a plate sitting on the tabletop those two objects will pull toward each other. There's a gravitational pull pulling, pulling them toward each other. Now that gravitational pull is very, very small. It's far too small to have any noticeable effect. The, it's not anywhere close to being big enough to overcome the force of friction between those objects and the tabletop. 
So those objects don't actually move together as a result of that force because the force is so small. But the force is there. It's real. You only typically feel gravity when very large objects are involved. Gravity is a weak force and it doesn't show up in a noticeable size with objects of everyday size like a plate and a, a cup on the tabletop. You need large objects to produce a noticeable amount of gravity. And by large, I mean something the size of the, a planet, like the size of the Earth, or at least the size of the Moon, something really big. Even a giant mountain, the biggest mountain in the world, Mount Everest, doesn't produce enough gravity for you to feel. If you're standing next to Everest, you don't feel pulled toward it because of the gravitational force. You are pulled toward it because of the gravitational force, but the force is just too weak with an object that small. A mountain is considered small in this context. You, you need something big like a planet to produce a noticeable gravitational pull. And, and, and as you know, on the Earth you feel the downward pull of gravity all the time. The thing to realize is that every object is always pulling toward every other object with a force that we call gravity.